Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm on a train and um, I'm not going anywhere. But it's quite a nice train to be sat on and I can watch trains a lot out the window. I'm at Crew Heritage Centre, so following on from our miniature railway video, this video I'm going to show you the Heritage Centre. So I'm going to get out of my seat. This is the APT, the electric APT, the first tilting train in Britain. The last video, the miniature railway one, ended here. It's funny because the miniature railway actually goes both sides. If you look out there, you can just see a track. And if you look out there, you can see the other tracks. So when we we're on the miniature railway, we went all round the APT. Uh, now we're having a look in the APT itself. Well, it was a um, London Northwestern Railway Class 350 passing. So let's have a look around Crew Heritage Centre and I'll tell you a bit about it. So we're in a APC carriage, we are slightly tilted, it feels a bit weird um, being a bit tilted, so it gives you an idea of the layout of the train, and we go through here, there's a toilet just there, not particularly big, a um, bit sort of typically sort of 1970s looking, this is where we finished the other one, because I said there was this model, and you've got the Barbies and Ken as passengers enjoying a ride on the APT. So if we go back outside now, because the next carriage is the power car and we can't go through that. So there's the miniature railway. There's the, the loco is just running round its train. So this is the power car. So passengers can't actually go in the power car. So we have, that's why I've had to come outside to get into the front three passenger carriages. So we'll have a look in them and then we'll go and have a look in the exhibition hall where there's some model railways. Um, what I've done, there's a few model railways here so rather than me talk too much while the trains are running I'll make a third video. So the first video was the miniature railways, second one was the heritage centre itself and then the third one I won't speak in it will just be footage of the model railways. So if we just go through here, thank you. This is the first class carriage of the APT, so you can see there's two plus one seating and the seats are nicely lined up with the windows. The luggage space isn't that great, then you've got all this room here between the seats in which to put your luggage. So that's first class, let's walk through into standard class now. I think this carriage here, yeah, this, very narrow, but this is the buffet car. Looks like they actually did draft beer on the train. Unfortunately, there's no one there, so um, can't have a drink. Um, it'd be quite nice, wouldn't it, sitting and have a drink on the train. So this is back into standard class. Even then, there were seats which didn't brilliantly line up with the window, but at least you got some window. Well, that's all right. It's nice lined up with the window. We go through here into the front carriage, and then the driver's cab will be just beyond there. Like the tartan seats, it, you know, you know you're going to Scotland when the seats are that colour. He's just been using the toilet. So let's go back outside, just show you from here. That is the spare APT carriage, um, or power car rather. That was at the Electric Railway Museum at Coventry until it closed and it ended up here. Over there's a class 87 locomotive. Now I never travelled behind one on the West Coast Main Line, but I do remember seeing them. I remember going to Berkhamsted Castle as a child and it was all 86s and 87s before the Pendolinos came along. I like that route master, I love that route master. Go into the exhibition centre now, so I'll just point out there's a few model railways but we'll see them better later. There was a o, o gauge model of the APT that we've just been on as a Voyager. And there's a class 50. And the APT. Oh, and a Royal Scott. So now let's walk into the exhibition centre itself. So it's quite a big room, there's a few interesting things. There's a cab of a 47. 
and behind us is a whole class 47. So there's lots of, this tells you a lot about crew in the area. There's that interesting vehicle there, which I'm not too sure what it is. So there's little models of buildings you'd have found in crew. So this is one of the pubs in crew, Chetwode Arms. And over here, there is some interesting vehicles. So you've got a mini ice cream van, which seems to, I seem to have set some music off. There's another, I can't entirely, is that an idea? I'm not sure, it's an ice cream van. And then you've got, I think it's a Vauxhall ice cream van and a Bedford ice cream van. That's a model of the pavilion in Queen's Parking Crew. And as you can hear, there's a train outside. Some more buildings here. So now, let's go back outside and we'll have a look around the rest of the site. So I'm going to kind of take you on like a, a whistle stop tour of Crew Heritage Centre. I don't want to show you everything because the idea is I make these videos and you can come and see it for yourself. But I'll certainly show you some of the best things there are to see here. So walking back past the APT, set of wheels there. There's the uh, route master again. We went in that door. Let's go over there now. That is the signal box, the crew junction signal box, the north junction, because obviously crew is one huge junction and in signalling terms it's divided into lots of smaller junctions because some stations can have one signal box that controls the whole station but some were like crew. I'm not sure how many signal boxes there were but there must have been quite a few. There's the miniature railway again. So we're kind of now coming down to the apex of the two sides of the site, so it goes that way and that way. Then the miniature rail, as I said, is a V-shape the other way. It's quite an unusually shaped site. Can we go in the cab? Class 87, let's do that. So, class 87s, there's, I'm not sure how many have been scrapped. I think there was 35 of them, 110 miles an hour. I much prefer these and a set of Mark IIs or threes and Pendolinos. But I suppose, you know, things move on. A few have been scrapped. This one's preserved here. There's one preserved at the National Railway Museum. There's one of them, the only one that's mainline certified Shunster sleeper stock at London Euston. And there's quite a few of them in Bulgaria. So there are, there is still possible to travel behind them, but not regularly only on the odd rail tour both in England or I don't know when there's last been one and if there were any rail tours in Bulgaria I think they're more for good so they don't reuse them on passenger trains I'm not sure why there's a tiger on the roof but there we go um, so this what you can see this uh, that is part of where the 18 inch gauge tramway went up to the signal box I'm not quite sure the exact purpose of it needing to run up there but I can see some wagons we'll have a better look we go up there's a little cafe here so i'm gonna walk through the cafe we're gonna go up there to the gallery where you can watch trains from so that's the cafe in the shop so we're now downstairs in the signal box there's quite a lot to see here um i'm not gonna show you everything because it would take a while. There's a load of books to sell, and whenever I see these things, I always end up buying books and videos, which uh, usually annoy certain relations of mine. That's quite a nice model railway yeah. here, an American style railway. But I'll make a separate video on this with the trains going around. I wanted to show you this. This really nice viewing window to a crew station. I remember when I last came here, 10 years ago, I ticked off my last Pendolino here. The last one I hadn't seen, it went past and I ticked it off. Yeah. So yes, great model railway. American style model railway. So in a separate video, this and the model railways we saw in the other exhibition hall will be shown. Um, I'll just quickly show you this one. There's a little model railway there. 
which isn't running. Um, so there's no video that it may if a good strand. So there's all sorts of signaling equipment. Far too many for me to go into too much detail. But if you like your signaling, it's great. Now this is cool. This is all the relays underneath the signal box for an electronic signal box. There's just you know so many relays. It's really quite fascinating. So there's a lot about signaling here, as we will see more of. But let's go upstairs now. Here is the power signal box itself. Look at that array of little levers. It's a bit like if you go to Beckham's Cotton Model Village where we have been a few times, they've got a signal box a bit similar to this controlling their gauge one model trains. And um, but this is on a really big scale. It's start to rain again. There's a railway station out there. Um, there's another array of signaling levers. Amazing. There's a huge map up there of everything it would have controlled. I'm not sure how many people they'd have needed, but there'd have been probably quite a few people up here. Now, let's just brave the rain for a moment. Um, there's a light engine on the miniature railway down there. This is what's great about this is you've got a good view of both railways. So you've got the West Coast Main Line here. That's going up towards Glasgow. That's the line to Manchester. The railway station's there. And the line to Chester's over there. So where we're going to go now, past those locos to the other signal boxes and we're going to see some more signalling. Shame it's raining for long. I know everyone's standing out here in the rain waiting for one. There's some of that 18-inch gauge railway that used to run around the whole of the crew work site. Crew work's about half a mile over there. So now let's go back down the stairs again. generation but the APT and of course you've got Pendolinos. I was here, the, the other thing that happened last time I came here, Duchess of Sutherland just happened to go past. I don't think that will happen today but that was great because I saw three generations of West Coast Mainland Tower. Now as I said about the APT it's other power. We can go in this one and have a look so let's do it and get out the rain. Well it's um, very small sorts of motors, don't know too much about it. So I think when they were in service passengers couldn't have walked through here. So in my books technically it's a loco all trains. To me a loco has to be a vehicle on the train you can't travel in. So HSTs, TGVs to me are all a form of loco haul train. Well it's a power cut I suppose. That however is not a local, that's a driving van trailer. Now I remember these on the London Liverpool Street to Norwich. In fact even quite recently I've travelled on these out of Norwich but not to London but to um, Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft when there was the famous short set with a class with two class 37s. Is that a train coming? Yeah it is. Another Virgin Voyager. That's as if that was on cue. So here we have a class 37. I think, I don't know, sometimes they might do passenger rides up and down the um, this little demonstration line. It's not very long, but maybe they do that on special events. I'm not entirely sure. There's a diesel shunter here. I think it's a Rolls-Royce built diesel shunter. I'm not entirely sure. And um, 
signal boxes to have a look at. So that one says Crew Station A. So I'm not sure if that's its original site. That's Tesco's by the way. There's where many Tesco's are surrounded on all sides by a heritage railway centre. Uh, it's got upstairs. And then we'll have a look at this. Look at that one in a minute. It's up here now. Crew Station A. So what have we got here? We've got ooh, a nice little lead frame. So it gives a, I assume that's possibly this section of lines. This might be its original place, I'm not sure. That's a book, that's what Zingerman would have written, written down all the train movements. Now, we're gonna go and have a look at that one. That is, believe it or not, it's from Exeter. It was taken apart when it closed in, I think, 1985. And they bought it here, and it's all working. It's not actually controlling trains, but it's controlling signals. So let's go and see. Let's see a signal box. Yeah. It'll go up and down. See, it says signal box open, way in. So we're now underneath the signal box. So when a lead is pulled, like now you can hear all these are moving you can see there's weights and all these different pulleys and that pulley just dropped so that was someone upstairs pulling the levers in the signal box so let's go upstairs and see what we can let's see a signal box in action as if the trains are running through here on the train. So it's a really quite busy job, that's why he's constantly pulling the signals. The signal one's very kindly said I can have a go, so he's given me his um, Duster. rag, Duster, I think. I've got Paul 91, so it's a black lever, so that's a point. Um, no plunger, so yeah, there we go. So that's, no, I've just changed the point there. Do you want me to pull anything else? Or? Well, we can get Jess and see what little box one's on the bell. So that's how they just communicate with adjacent signal boxes. All these bells ringing you can hear. I've got the still train on Jess. Up there's a diagram of what would have of all the trains running. You can take that one too Which will be interesting. I'll press the plunger like that to release it. And I'll pull the lever. I haven't pressed it properly. Thank you. You've got to hold it down. It's got to be held down and pulled. Now you can't do that when you've got a camera in your other hand. <laughs> so there we go. I've now just set a signal to let a train go through. So that was quite fun. So from Crew Heritage Centre. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Finishing up here. That was really great fun to have a go at pulling levers in the old Exeter signal box. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're ever in Crew, maybe you're just changing trains and you've got a few hours, then do walk from Crew Station to come visit the Heritage Centre. Thanks for watching and goodbye.